Hey Bridgepoint kids, happy Labor Day. I hope you're able to get out this weekend and spend some time together with your family safely. Other than home, I'm sure that we've all gotten a lot of family time this year. But regardless, I hope wherever you are, whatever you're doing, um, that you've had a, had a good weekend um, and were able to enjoy the holiday. It's hard to believe it's September already. Um, we're almost done with our lesson series on the armor of God. Today's lesson is gonna be the fifth lesson um, and the next to last one for the series. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the helmet of salvation. But first, a recap. Last week, we talked about the shield of faith. We talked about how Jesus tells us that if our faith in him is even as small as a mustard seed, then that's big enough to move mountains. Our faith is believing in Jesus Christ, believing that he is God's son and that he came to save us for our sins and saved us completely from our sin and being separated from him forever so that we could spend forever with him. When we have our shield of faith, we can know and trust that God will defend us and protect us from the flaming darts of Satan who lies and tries to distract us and make us feel defeated. Okay, so this morning we are going to read again from uh, Ephesians 6. I can't believe I forgot that. Uh, this time we're going to go a little bit further um, and we're going to be reading from verses 13 through 17. So again, if you need to pause the video while you find your place, you can do that and unpause it when you're ready. So if you found your place, you can read along with me. Uh, we're in Ephesians chapter 6 and we're reading verses 13 through 17. It says, Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand firm. Stand, therefore, having fastened, fastened on, I don't know why I can't say that, the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put, in, put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, cats notwithstanding, Take up the shield of faith by which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation. So today we're talking about the helmet of salvation. We all know what a helmet is. You wear one when you're riding your bike or your scooter. When people play baseball, they wear helmets because they're going to be sliding on the ground or football because they're going to be charging into each other. Um, during the big game and soldiers wear helmets to protect themselves um, when they're fighting battles. Now most of us don't wear this kind of equipment because it looks cool. We wear it because it's very practical and it protects our heads, it protects our brains which control everything in our body. Because our heads, our brains are the most important body part, well maybe aside from the heart, it needs a lot of really, really strong protection. The cats would like to share some really cool facts about human brains with you. So I'm gonna give them a second and then we'll be right back. You had more brain cells as a baby than you have now or ever again in your life. When awake, the human brain produces enough electricity to power a small light bulb. Brain information moves anywhere between one mile per hour and an impressive 268 miles per hour. The human brain has enough memory to hold 3 million hours of TV. Those facts are crazy. God designed our brains to be incredible. Um, so they need a lot of protection, not just physically, but spiritually. And that's why Paul wrote to us about the helmet of salvation, because our, our thoughts need protecting. So if you flip to um, 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verses 8 through 9, um, you'll find another letter that Paul wrote to the early Christians who were being persecuted in the middle of trying to figure out this new life in Christ and what all that meant. They were suffering. They had property taken away from them. They could be thrown in jail. They could be, they could have their life taken away from them. So in the midst of all that, um, of being mistreated for believing in Jesus, they really needed to be encouraged to stay 
in the Lord. Um, so this is what Paul said to them so that they could armor up um, and, and protect their minds from the flaming darts that Satan was throwing at them at that time um, so that they could know that God had the final say in their situation and that he had already accomplished the mission that he wanted to accomplish, which was to save them through his son. So no ma matter what, no matter what they were facing, the day had already been won. But sometimes when you're going through stuff, you can forget that. So this is what Paul said to the Thessalonians in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 8 through 9. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm gonna read another version of it. It's the exact same thing, just stated a little differently. I think it might be a little easier for you guys to understand. Um, so um, same thing again, it says this, but friends, you are not in the dark. We belong to the day, so how can you be taken off guard? You are sons of light, daughters of day. So let's not sleepwalk through life like those others. Let's keep our eyes open and be smart. Since we are creatures of the day, let's act like it. Walk out into the daylight sober, dressed up in faith, love, and the hope of salvation. God did not set us up for angry rejection, but for salvation by our master, Jesus Christ. Satan would love to fool us into thinking that we're not good enough for Jesus to love us, that we're not good enough to get in heaven. He spent all of his time since the dawn of creation doing this, trying to distract us and, and keep us from the truth. It's funny how if you mix a little truth with a lie, it makes for a very convincing lie. He's right. Without Jesus, we're not good enough to to be with him. Satan wants us to think that we have to spend all of our time being good enough on our own to save ourselves in order to, to be with Jesus, but that's not true. The part that Satan wants to leave out is that Jesus came to the earth that he created, to the people that he created, to live a perfect, sinless life, and he did that. Um, he did that for people that messed up and that would continue to mess up and sin. He did that for people that hated him. He did that for people that hated him back then, and he did that for people that hated him now, and everybody in between, including you and me. Jesus died on the cross for us, for you and for me. He was a sacrifice because only his goodness and only his righteousness is strong enough and powerful enough to change our destiny, which is to be eternally separated from God, separated forever. Um, that's the only way that we could pay, come close to paying our uncountable debt against God. So instead of receiving God's righteous anger against us, we are covered by the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ. It's, it's a free gift and it's an incredible gift. The word salvation means to be rescued. So if we were lost at sea and somebody came and saved us, doesn't matter who, but somebody came to save us, then that person would be our savior. Jesus rescued us from sin and death and he is our savior, he is our rescuer, he is our salvation. Romans 6.23 says this, for the earnings for sin is death but the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Salvation is a free gift. At Christmas time, we all give each other, each other gifts. Um, you probably get gifts from your parents. You probably give gifts to your siblings. Your siblings probably give gifts to you. Do you earn any of the gifts that are given to you? No, if you did, it wouldn't be a gift anymore, would it? Those gifts are given to you because your family loves you so much. And that's what God did to us, did for us through his son. But guess who doesn't like that? Satan. In fact, he 
absolutely hates it. He messes with our minds. He wants us to feel like we have to work for a gift, but you can't work for a free gift, can you? Satan wants us to believe that if we have the gift, that we can lose it. Listen to this. This is Romans 8, 37 through 39, and it says, Know in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor anything to come, nor, pow nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Guys, we are more than conquerors. That means that we're not only surviving and just scraping and getting by, we are thriving because of the sacrifice that Jesus made, trading our lives for his. We are growing, there is life. We know that when we have Jesus with us and in us, that there's nothing that can separate us from him. He's with us forever. Satan can't, can't stop the love of God for us. That is an, a wonderful and amazing truth to know. And um, that's why we need to protect our heads. We've got to protect our minds because Satan is spending all of his energy and all of his time trying to convince us otherwise. When we wear the helmet of salvation, we remember Jesus' sacrifice for us on the cross. We remember that there's nothing that we could do on our own to save ourselves, and it's his righteousness that brings us together with God. Um, and that it's a free, it's a free gift for all, um, that we could not earn any other way but through him. And since we know it's a free gift for all, it is so, so important to be taking advantage of opportunities to share this good news with everyone who needs it. Um, so that's part of what this series is about. Um, it's for strengthening us as Christians, but if it's for everybody who's not a believer because we have to go out into the world and show who Jesus is. Um, we talked about the Great Commission the other week. It's our job as Christians who have been saved to share this good news with everybody that we meet that doesn't know. Part of the deal with a free gift is accepting it. So if we don't do that, um, and we don't take the, the free gift of life that God has given us through his son Jesus, and we don't follow Jesus, then we don't get to spend forever with Jesus. So going out with the gospel of peace uh, strapped to your feet, like we talked about last week, and the helmet of salvation um, to protect your head and your mind, um, as well as the belt of truth and the shield of faith. Be ready to go out into the world and share the good news with everybody you don't know. Um, the news is is there to share, and it's our it's our it's our duty to um, to share that with everybody. Okay guys, that about wraps things up here. Uh, the cicadas are super loud, I'm sorry. I hope, hopefully, well, there was a car door. The cicadas are nothing to a car door. <laughs> um, have a great holiday um, and enjoy the rest of your week. Luna's gonna model the helmet of truth. We've gotten real crafty around here. Hopefully he will wear it. I want his little ears to stick up. Um, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.